class is over, but. I'm recording now. Okay. Like over lunch or something. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so back to class again after our break. So, can you see the screen from over there? You can't? No, you want that one set up. Half of it? Yeah. All right, well, if you can't set the screen very good, feel free to come back and join us over here. <laughs> okay. So, where we left off. Where we left off, we just had our list and we had finished assignments and how to edit my list. Um, that's better. Yeah. We've gone through a few of the body buttons and a few of the footer buttons. So we're just going to quick go through the rest of the body buttons and footer buttons on our status board. The on-call staff that's right above assignments, we're never really going to use that. We have a calendar that works very well. It's a good system. If we need to update who's on call and who's not, if it changes, then we can update it on the calendar. It's a go-to place now. This would just be one more place we'd have to maintain it, and so it has a chance of not being correct. So we're not going to use this feature. We'll just stick with our calendar and our marker board and we are. We talked about assignments. Clinical data is the next tab. From the status board, when you have your patient highlight in green, if you have multiple patients, you can highlight one of them at a time. They're highlight and you click on clinical data. It brings you into this screen. What's in this screen is basically view only information. There is some stuff in here that you can click on and edit, but we prefer that you did not enter patient information here except for the dietary tab. So what I'm going to talk about is the information you can see here, and then we'll go through the dietary tab when we talk about our orders training in week three. We'll tell you what the functionality here is. This is really the only place that you'll be documenting for the patient's information, primarily on admission. But it's a handy little view <coughs> for what is going on with the patient. So in your binders, we're going to get you caught up. Everybody should have this page, lists, find account, right? This is everything that we talked about for, I want to move out in front of the video camera, but you guys probably can't see me over there, huh? I'm just going to have to stand in front of the tape. <laughs> All right, so this list find account, it talks about that whole search routine if you have a patient call in or you just need to search for some quick information. The add patient topic is the next one. On the screenshot, it shows the check boxes here when you, have, when you click on that assignments button. When you turn the page, it shows you what the footer buttons are in the My Assignments routine, or excuse me, in the Assignments routine, you can add to My List, My List Provider, and Team. The screenshot after that is the Care Provider, Copy From Provider. And so we did make a screenshot for you for easy reference. The one after that shows that you can check off multiple patients in the Assignments routine. The boxes on the left have different checks. One of them is not checked. The page after that talks about your My List in the Assignments Routine. And this screen comes up. And remember that this is the same screen that you see from the My List status board in the Edit My List Routine. And when you turn the page, there's a Help page all about how to take care of assignments for yourself or for somebody else by that routine. Just for your reference because I'm going to go through them kind of fast. The next page talks about copying from a provider and that you can select certain patients from that provider list. You don't have to copy them all over. You just have to put a check in the box for the ones you want. Or remember that there's that master check. When you click on the check at the top of the column, it checks everything off. When you check it again, it unchecks everybody. The next one is the add patient topic where you can add a patient one at a time to your list. So there's a help button for that. We were more hands-on, so it was better to be clicking than it is to be turning pages at the time. So we'll go through these now. The add beds, you have a screenshot on there. Remember that that's only good for if you have every patient assigned to you. If you're the charge nurse or you're the only aide on the floor that day, or something like that. Or you're working as a team with the other aide on the floor, something like that. Then you would use the beds to get everybody on your list and you'd use 
add beds from location med surge, nursery, and OB. And that's how you can get every bed on the floor onto your list. Go ahead and turn the page again, and it just shows all the beds that are listed for OB and nursery and med surge. And then we have this one that's called cover for. And we talked about what that can do. Does anybody remember? Somebody. Exactly. <laughs> Out to lunch. Then it brings you to this page, clinical data review, right? So we'll be caught up in our binder. You turn the page in your binder again, you have the screenshot of what I have on my screen right now. And on your screenshot, I've already crossed off the additional tab and the CDS tab because those are going to go away. You won't even see them anymore. They won't even be there to annoy you. And then you also have the main tab, and it just shows pretty basic information. This is not where we're going to go to routinely document height and weight, by the way. This is really just kind of view only. So if I had height and weight documented, I'd click on it and see the most recent one. If I had a code status order, it would show here. It also shows in multiple other places, but it's just here for quick reference. We talked about the dietary tab. It has to do with ordering. You can hold a tray here. It's a nursing communication for nourishment. We'll get into that in week three. If you turn the page, it shows some of the dietary tab, but we've um, done a lot of editing on it, and so we'll have some different screenshots for you. Turn the page one more, and you have the allergies topic. And right now, we don't have any allergies reported on our patient, but we're going to go in to view them, and if it has been addressed, then it would say no known allergies. If it's blank, that means nobody's addressed the allergies yet. And up here in this header bar, notice it says allergies for this patient not recorded. Turn the page again, and you can see home meds. Here's this blank. If they had home medications that were recorded, it would show here. This is not where we go in to enter and edit home medications for the patient. Click on patient pharmacies. If they had a retail pharmacy or multiple pharmacies, they would all show there. Just kind of view only. If you click on the body button that says status board, it takes you back to your status board, to the my list. But I'd like you to notice what happened at the bottom of your screen when you click that button. If you hover your mouse on those tiles, do you see that the clinical data page is still technically open on your browser? Go ahead and click on that again. So it'll take you back to the status board, but it won't close your routine, right? So the only way to close this routine would be to X out or to cancel or save data. For the clinical data routine, if you're in there and you chart something on the dietary tab, you want to save not X out. If you X out, it will not save the information you put in, and sometimes it'll prompt you, sometimes it won't. <laughs> the sky is falling. <laughs> Somebody's really exercising up there. Sometimes it prompts you to save, sometimes it won't. So you X out, and you'll lose unsaved data sometimes. So the best way to get out of clinical data is cancel and save buttons at the bottom. And you would use that, not the status board button, okay? If I just use the status board button, my session's still open. Somebody else wants to go in and view information for this patient. They'll get a warning that says, this routine is in use by, and it'll list the name of the nurse that has the routine still open. So just so that you know, cancel or save is the way to get out of there. I'm just going to cancel since I didn't put anything in. And when I cancel, if I make changes, I get a prompt. It's okay to exit. The next body button on there, and we're going to go ahead and turn in your binder. We, talk, we showed you the home meds routine. We're going to get into that in detail during week three again. We showed you the pharmacy routine. There's a screenshot there. So then you should have this consent forms topic. Everybody has that? There is some other reference information in here for us. <coughs> After the clinical data body button, we have manage orders. We're going to train in detail on that routine in another week. Patient reports, we'll train on that another day. 
consent forms also. When you click on consent forms, though, I wanted to introduce you to this concept. We've built a few things in here, such as like a transfer form. So when I go into consent forms for the patient that I have pilot on my status board or my list, I can select a form that I need on the patient to consent. I highlight it. It appears at the bottom. It's a status of new. When I save it, it says that it's filed, that I've started this form for the patient. And then if I can hit the print footer button, I get that preview screen. You hit OK to preview the form. And the great thing about the consent forms in Meditech is some of them will come pre-populated with the patient's information in there so you don't have to track down a sticker. It'll print with the patient's name already at the top. So we're trying to build in like the main important consent forms that we use. Um, and we'll train more on what to find in the consent forms tab and what not to a little bit down the road when we have forms training. But I just wanted to point out that that's what the consent forms button does. And you can just X out of there and go back to my list. Location reports is the next body button. This is kind of a handy place where dietary comes in and they can print meal labels and reports and that kind of thing. There's not a lot that we're going to use in here in our daily routines, really. So I'm just going to uh, push the status board button to go back to my status board. From location reports, if you X out of there, it closes your status board. Did that happen to anybody? Okay. If that happens, you just relaunch your status board and saved all your patient information, your assignments. The next one is the open chart routine, and I bet you can guess what that does, right? There's two ways to open a patient chart. You can click highlight the patient in green and click this button, and it launches you into the first <laughs> screen that you'll see of a patient chart. Or you can click in this column that has this little manila folder that's open. Click in the blank space on the highlight the patient's name, and it'll open the chart the same. The close chart button, when you have a patient's chart open, it's available, and you can highlight the patient's chart that you want to close and push close. Nothing there's nothing assigned. assigned, you know, there's oh. no orders or anything. So. Oh, you said it's like care items in selected categories, and I was kind of expecting something different. Uh-huh, my screen was a little different than yours. Somebody has been playing with this patient, yeah. Um, this next body button, indirect tasks, we talked about how you can assign a crash cart. We won't ever really use that. I'm going to try and get rid of that button, but right now it's stuck. It's just there to annoy us, but maybe someday I can get rid of it since we won't be using that feature. And then it's important to take notice of the last two body buttons of change site and department and preferences. If you click on change site and department, like if we were an enterprise like CHI with multiple facilities in multiple states, I could change my department that I'm working in. If I'm a float nurse, I could go and float to a different floor, that type of thing and it would kind of adjust what I see in my lookups for lists and everything. Ours are all set to default. That's because we really don't function on multiple floors and things, and so that's not something that you'll want to change. When you click on the Preferences body button, you see all of these wonderful options that can be set that will change how you see options in your desktop. Just like Patsy and Audrey had that HIPAA view and other people had like the full status board, this was something that can be set up in user preferences. But if you change your preferences, it's really hard for us to troubleshoot what happened to your view that it's different from other people's views. And so I'm asking that you please, please, please do not go into preferences and change anything. We'll have an advanced users class, maybe six to 12 weeks and out from live once we're really comfortable with what we see every day on our screens and we can learn how to adjust those things and use them to our advantage. 
but until then, don't go into it. It'll make us, it'll make it really, really difficult to help you when we're live if you change your preferences. So, Sarah Sweat was funny. She said, you know, if you even hover your mouse over that, you just need to have a little icon that goes like this yeah. and just slaps your hand. <laughs> So just, just imagine, you put your mouse there and you're getting a little tap. <laughs> Don't go in. So we've talked about the body buttons, a little bit about the footer buttons on the status board. Everyone has the footer button for refresh, right? When you hit refresh, notice in the very left corner of your screen, you get this little thing called sorting, gathering. It's a real fast little blurb. Our status boards auto refresh every five minutes. But if something's changed on your status board, you can refresh it manually and it'll update your list. Like you charted on something and it's still showing as a seven o'clock intervention, even though you know that you already charted on the Braden, then you can refresh it and it'll fall off if you really did chart on it. Remove from my list, we've already played with that. That's how you can get a patient off one at a time. And edit my list, we've been in there a lot. Close all charts, we haven't played with a lot. And so, I'm going to I'm going to add some patients to my list so I can show you this in detail. I didn't do the master check before I saved. There, now I have all these patients on my list. I can open up one chart and I get a message that says, this patient's discharged. Do you want to continue? Just kind of an FYI. It's kind of like a HIPAA thing, like do you really need to be in there if they're discharged? So it's just a little warning. It's a soft stop. I can still open the patient chart. Oh man, I've been charting in here and now I need to look up a lab real quick on another patient, but I don't want to lose my data. I'm going to keep working in this chart. I can just minimize the chart and I can open up your Sue's chart who is also it happens to be in a discharge status. And I can come over and I can click to look at her labs. And then, oh man, the doc wants to know what that home medication was for the patient. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and open the chart and see what that is for spike. I go to open it and I get a warning message. The maximum number of open charts has been reached. That's because you can only open two charts at a time. It's kind of a safety feature so you don't end up with like all these charts open and then you accidentally click on the wrong one in document by ha in the wrong chart. By having just two open, you get the um, convenience of doing documentation in one and doing a quick lookup on somebody else, but then realizing you need to shut that second chart and go back to the main one that you were documenting on. So we'll just have to be very careful to use that responsibly. When you're in a patient chart, you can see who it is because their name is in the header bar and you know it's your session because your name is up here. When I hover on my tiles, I can see I have another chart open here at the bottom. I can open it up. I know I have a different patient. I can close these charts one at a time by highlighting the name of the person's open chart and clicking the close chart button on the right. I can close both charts at the same time by using that footer button, close all charts. So I'm just going to hit close all charts. We're on page five of our outline now, or excuse me, page four. And we've gone through the PCS status board footer buttons. And I just want to give you a rundown of what the PCS status board columns and functions do because it's very much an interactive desktop. The columns are sortable. We've looked at this chart column, and we know that when we click in here, we can open the chart right there. Room and bed, registration type, admission date, and time is pretty self-explanatory. These are sortable. So when I click on room and bed, in numeric order, it'll bring the hundreds to the top or the two hundreds to the top. Registration type is sortable. It's actually by alphabetic, so if you want to bring the discharged patients to the top, you can. We'll have a setting that the discharge patients can fall off of your desktop after so many hours and that kind of thing. We'll get some of that stuff set up for us for convenience. Admission date and time is not sortable. The name is sortable, so it'll alphabetize the names in forward or reverse order. And if you have a nurse that has the same last name, it goes by the first letter of the first name, second letter, and so on. 
age and birthday are not sortable. The yellow flag signifies that you have patients with similar names. And so it's just like, hey, be extra careful. Make sure that you're making sure these are the right meds and make sure that these are the, this is the, really the chart that you want to be documenting on before you open the chart. There's a little yellow flag in there. So right now when all of our last names are nurse, there's a lot of flags. But if we have two Joneses on the floor, then we'll have a flag for those Joneses, just as a caution. The code status column is not sortable. And this column only populates when we actually have the order put in the system that the physician has verified this will be their ordered code status. It doesn't come from the nursing documentation and assessment of the patient preference. It comes from what the doctor has discussed with the patient and taken into consideration with their living will and advanced directives and then made the order. Um, the next MAR is, sort, is a sortable column and so it'll bring the patients up to the top of your list that have meds due. And then when you click in the box that medications are due, you have the option to just go right into the MAR from there. So that's kind of handy. This is called an ellipsis. And when you click on the ellipsis, it just shows you a little bit more of what's up and coming. Are we going to change our system to uh, barcode? Scans. You are awesome. Yeah. You like barcodes? I do because, you know, uh, St. Francis uses Meditech. So as soon as you scan the drug and then you scan their ID or, or whatnot for that time, it docks that you gave it. So you yeah. don't have to go in and do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. <coughs> Ours will work a little bit differently than that, but it will still have the verified patient and everything and it can launch you right into the mark when you do that. But we will still have the mark when you scan. Um, the mark column is sortable. The next intervention is also sortable, so you can bring the people that have nursing interventions due to the top of the list, and it'll kind of organize it by the most recent that's due, 648, 7, when you click on the ellipses, it just expands the view of what you see here. Notice that the red items are overdue and the black items are for a future schedule. Can everybody see that on my screen? When I click in the box for the interventions, I get the opportunity that I can check off the interventions that I want to document on. I can push go to work list. It'll automatically open up the patient's chart into the nursing work list and then I can document the items from here. The qu blue question mark on there is just a little help button of its own. So you can click on it and it'll tell you where you're at. The orders flag just tells you, and it's sortable, if you have orders on a patient that need to be acknowledged or reviewed, it'll say ACK or REV in here. Um, if you click on the question mark, on that, it's a help column and it'll just tell you a little bit about it. Clicking in the cell will bring the user to the order acknowledgement screen. So when I click in there, it's exactly what it does. I have the opportunity that I can review my new orders and acknowledge them. In the actual orders, that's the orders flag. In the actual orders column, there's another blue little question mark and you can click to get some help on that. There's an ellipsis, so you can expand to see some of the up and coming things. When you click in the cell, it launches you into the manage orders routine, which is a tab on the um, patient's open chart, the orders routine. You can view the current orders, you can place new orders, all that good stuff. New results. Does everybody have new results visible on your screen or do you have to scroll over? There's a bottom scroll bar so that you can see further columns over here. And it depends on which computer monitor you're using. If you're like on the couch with the laptop type screen or if you're on a big monitor at the nursing station or even these, you might notice your neighbor's monitor is different and looks a little different than yours does. It might not fit as much stuff. All you gotta do is use the scroll bar. So just know that that's available and you can the reason I want to bring that up is because some people, depending on their screen size, can't see the new results in the TAR columns. 
new results means that lab has posted a new lab result, micro result, or x-ray has posted a new report, and so it'll give you a little flag in there, and it'll say like CDC, and when you click on it, if I had an order on the patient, it would open me into the patient's chart, and right into the lab, and I can view what the new result is. Kind of nice right there from the status board. Has anyone heard of TAR before? Transfusions. Transfusions. It's kind of like MAR, only for transfusions. Transfusion administration record. So you get a little flag in here that tells you that your blood product is ready for admi um, administration. Now it's a communication tool. But it certainly doesn't replace that lab will need to call us and let us know, especially if we, they know we're waiting for this blood. And you know, it's kind of on a time clock that the blood's ready. We need to get it over to the patient within 30 minutes. And so it's just a flag. Hey, come check this out. And then as soon as we check it out, we have our 30 minute mark. If we had a blood product flag in here and we clicked on it, it would again open the patient's chart automatically for us. And then there's a body button down here that says TAR and it would bring us into this routine where we can verify the patient, which is also done with barcode scanning. You can initiate the transfusion, document your vitals, document the intake from the blood administration, document your assessments regarding blood administration and any reactions. So it's very handy, sorry about that, to have right there on the status board. And it's actually an awesome piece of software. It's like my most favorite thing about Meditech so far is this transfusion administration record. So I'm excited to show you that in, in uh, the upcoming weeks. The last column, as we've all seen, shows who the nurses are. And some of these patients, hmm? did you see that? <laughs> Let me click on it again. Boy, they're going to get awesome care. Uh -huh. Look at all oh. the people oh. caring for them. <laughs> Someone on one, everything <laughs> yeah. in it. Some of these test patients, we all play with them so much that they have a lot of nurses assigned. And I'm not even going to worry about cleaning up those assignments. It's going to take me a day just to do that. So this is the main body and columns of our status board. When you highlight a patient on a status board, it changes the information you see in the detail box. I highlight King James, different information. This patient, Nurse Jessica, and your patient also, only shows an attending provider. That comes over from the admissions routine. So as soon as the patient's admitted, they put in the attending, it appears on our desktop, on our details section. When you click on the provider's name, it'll show you the phone number. I think that's the phone number for the clinic. And the fax number also is kind of handy, but it's not their cell number, and it's maybe not their preferred means of communication, okay? I'm gonna click on a patient that I have that has a little more information in here, so I can explain some of the items in the detail box. Your items are blank except for attending provider. This first diagnosis box, we're actually gonna get rid of this, it's just a cleanup item for us, because poor Spike, is actually admitted with chronic pinky pain, and I'll show you where that's documented. <laughs> and his diagnosis says salmonella meningitis and shigella dysentery. So this poor man. These diagnoses came on here from coding, and coding doesn't code the diagnosis until discharge. So these were actually the diagnoses on his last visit. He's a very sick man. Now all he has is pinky pain, so mm -hmm. apparently Spike's getting better. So we're just going to get rid of that so it's not there to confuse us, okay? But if you do see something on your patient, please disregard it until you get fixed. The very bottom box is called comments, and when you click in it, that's how I know he's here for chronic pinky pain. And there's a little message on this comments box. This comment is for communication purposes only. It will not be saved as part of the patient's permanent record. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? It's just like our visit notes that we have now. They don't save to the permanent record. So this is a nursing communication tool that I could maybe put in that he has an appointment coming up, that kind of thing, and save it here. It's free text, appointment on 310. It's five o'clock somewhere. 
won't save to the patient's chart, but it's a nursing communication tool. Hit save. Another user has updated it. Is it okay to overwrite? Well, that's kind of new. This is one I'm a little nervous about that one. So I overwrote the blank part of it, but it didn't delete the previous section. Thank goodness. I haven't had that warning message before. Mm -hmm. Have you had it? Mm -mm. No. Well, if you get it, it's okay to hit yes. <laughs> Now notice on my comment section in the detail box, it only shows like the first 15 characters. You have to click in the box to see the rest of it. The rest of the information from allergies down to visitors allowed, yes or no, comes from documentation on our nursing assessments, like our admission assessment, our height and weight, what we say they're on for oxygen, that comes over from the order and also what we update in our nursing documentation. When you click in allergies, you see an ellipses. And it's because only four can fit on there, but there's actually five listed for this patient. So don't be deceived that there's only four allergies. There's an ellipses there for a reason, and it's a flag that we need to click on that. There are other areas, though, that we can view patient allergies rather than just here. Their current weight, boy, 980 pounds. I don't even know if we can have a, have a bed big enough for Spike, but. We'll have to find a bariatric can't place. Whirlpool. Can't use the whirlpool. <laughs> um, the isolation, if there's an isolation order, would show here. The oxygen um, delivery device, the amount in liters, and the most recent saturation will show here. The IV information will show what type of IV line they have. Their fall score will show here. We've had a request to put the Braden score on here, which is handy. Do those, um, sorry, do okay. those stats update every time you enter vitals or do you have to go in and re-enter? It should update every time you enter the vitals. You don't have to click in here to update it. It's all pretty automatic. <coughs> Did you just see how my <coughs> auto refreshed? <laughs> the diets are listed. Anything that's a current diet. Visitors allowed, yes or no. When I click on a different patient, I get different information. See an ellipses, so I need to click on it and view the rest of the allergies. All that stuff. This one has an IV of implant and port. This one, delivery flow rate and oximetry. We've charted SATs on him, but we've never really put in that he needs oxygen. There's no order, perhaps, on this patient. If there was, maybe the order has been that we could put him on room air. And so the most recent documentation was just the SATs and not the delivery and flow rate of the oxygen. His fall score is zero. <laughs> we never see those. We take a picture of it. I click on the comments box. It just shows critical alert. Patient is a slug. Watch him carefully. Rob's the M&M &M machine. <laughs> I wonder who put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> My so cute. Jim. Jim. <laughs> Diagnosis intoxication. intoxication. <laughs> <laughs> so he's having fun with this. Any questions about any of these buttons on the status board so far? Okay. A couple I want to show you that are just handy. You've seen how you can click on an ellipsis and expand and see so much more in that column. On the footer, there's a plus and minus button. And when you hit the plus button, it'll just expand it up to like 10 maybe. And then notice here that you get a scroll bar to see the patients. And you also get a scroll bar over here so you can see the detail box. So you have up to three scroll yeah, bars yeah, on your screen. Open. These mm -hmm. were filled in and we should open. Mm -hmm. and, it would allow you to and it would allow you to expand. And then I can just push minus and it'll go back down again. The minimum is four. You can't really go less than four because this information is uh, determined important to you. Well, that concludes our status board presentation. Do you guys have any questions about all that functionality? In review, what are the buttons on the right called? Top one buttons. And at the bottom? What are the buttons? The buttons in the very bottom right hand of your screen. 
Which buttons never change? When you launch into the status board, what's the default list that you launch into? The my list. Yep, exactly. If you want to see every patient that's in the hospital right now, how would you do that? Any location? What are the three areas that you have to check on any location? Med search, OB, and nursery. Yep, exactly. If you want to make an assignment, so you've been to report and you've had assignments from the charge and you're ready to make your assignments, but you work the night before and you have patients on your list that you're not going to be assigned to this, on this shift, how can you clear your list and add the correct patients to your list? Assignments removal. Remove from list. Yep, you can go assignments, my list, and remove all. Yep. You can also just right here from the status board, go to edit my list, and then you can also remove all from right there. How are you going to get the patients onto your list now that you've cleared your list from the previous? My list or go to list and then into med search wherever you need to be and then assignments and then click. Mm -hmm. And then add. And then yep, add to my list. Yep, you can add to my list or just click on your provider. How can you make assignments to other people? Make them their care provider. Their care provider. Yep. Assignments by care provider. Exactly. It's easier when we're in the assignment team, isn't it? Because then you can see the clear buttons. You can copy from a provider. What does green mean in MetaTech? It draws your attention that this is this current selection, or if it's green text, you need to save it. Yep. Perfect. How many charts can you have open at one time? Two. Two. Yep. This is a group quiz. I'm just going to. Kate doesn't want it. <laughs> I'll take one. You'll take one? Oh, oh let's see. see. You don't need one? I've had enough. You've had enough? No? No. Nope. Gave up chocolate. Gave up chocolate. Good for you. Chocolate? Happy with you. No thanks. Man, you're out. Can't even get them. I love bit. Butterfinger. Yeah. I can only take one. <laughs> yeah. Ask me after March 31st. That is some <laughs> willpower. <laughs> you can't have it in the house. You can't take it and save it. Plus, everybody here. just had chips. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the temptation would be really too much. test that temptation. <laughs> <laughs> the next section in your binder that we're going to go over is all about care plans. And some of you have it listed as section two, but in some of yours, it's section three. And actually, even in that section, I think the first page that shows might be page five. But the outline starts with plan of care. So we'll help you find it in your binder. And it looks like this. This is plan. Okay. Yep, yours is gonna be section three. Go. Okay, yours is on your super user binder. It's you find yours like section yeah. four. four. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're on it right now. Plan here. Mm -hmm. okay. You have it. You've got yours.
that's one patient on their list, okay? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and have you guys go in and add um, Spike Humperdinck to your list. Already, go ahead and take out the first these uh, five pages of your plan of care outline. You kind of want those for reference, and I recommend that you take that little sticky tab off and then put it on the first page in your binder that's the health topic for plan of care. Learn, learn for that. <laughs> Okay. 